Welcome back to the BAM Online Podcast, this time a recruiting edition of the BOL Pod. Travis Schreier, Senior Analyst for BAMOnline.com, joined once again by Joseph Hastings. Does an outstanding job for us covering recruiting. So much recruiting talk going into this Texas weekend, as you might expect. Big weekend of visitors. Not so much from an official capacity, although I think basketball even has a couple of official visitors that we'll touch on with Joseph. But Joseph, uh, this is a weekend that a lot of us have been anticipating for a multitude of reasons, and recruiting is right at the top of that list. It's a massive weekend in terms of getting some of the top prospects in the nation, both in the 2024 and 2025 classes on campus. They'll even be getting some elite class of 2026 prospects visiting there. Um, you know, you talk about the basketball side of things, too. It's rare. We were talking about this before the, the show started, Travis, just seeing this amount of top level high school prospects visiting both the basketball and football programs. I mean, you, you look around the country right now, what other program is doing it like Alabama is uh, from the football and basketball uh, viewpoint? They're going to be bringing in a couple of official visitors, a five-star in the class of 2025, and one of the top prospects in 2026 as well. It's going to be a massive weekend all around for, for not only Nick Saban, but for Nate Oates and company as well. And you just look at the visitors, it just keeps on going and going and going. Obviously, still kind of a little bit of a fluid situation. You never know what will happen with flights and changes in schedules. We already had one with Elijah Griffin being scratched off, and he's going to be heading to South Carolina this weekend instead. But, you know, you just look at it top to bottom. It's it's one of the most impressive game day visit lists I've ever seen in my time covering recruiting since I started in 2017. Yeah, and just to be clear, we are recording mid-morning on Thursday. And if ever fluidity applies to a certain aspect of sports and college football specifically it is in recruiting so you're gonna want to stay with us at the round table there at bamaonline.com joseph i was looking at that list and it looks like it started back on august the 27th so when you talk about anticipation for this weekend uh strong mix of commitments as you would expect for both 24 and 25 i guess uh, but uncommitted players that are still out there and an impressive unofficial visitor from a far five-star perspective and Terry Bussey. Yeah, Terry Bussey is an interesting prospect when you talk about Alabama's pursuit of him because they've kind of left the door open to him playing on either side of the ball, wide receiver or defensive back. He's got that commitment date set for September 28th. He's going to be taking an official visit to LSU before he wraps up um, his recruitment as well. And he's got this one to Bama this weekend. Look, Texas A&M is the, the school to beat. They're viewed as a school to beat right now. Even though I asked Terry a few weeks ago if that's the truth, he said no. You know, he's still open in this process. But the Aggies are viewed as the as the program leading right now. But you never know what will happen, you know, with an official visit to Alabama. Obviously, it would have been preferable if the Crimson Tide could have gotten him on campus in the summer as well. But they will be getting this official visit. You know, you, you think back to last year with Jalen Hale, what Alabama was able to do where Texas was viewed as the leader at one point. Jalen got on campus in late July, got on campus for an official visit in early September, and then ended up committing to the Crimson Tide a couple of weeks later. I don't know if that's exactly going to play out the, the same way uh, with Terry Bussey's recruitment, but you know, they're, Alabama's getting him on campus for an official visit. There's obviously uh, mutual interest there, and you never know. When Nick Saban gets a recruit on campus and there's a multi-day stay in Tuscaloosa, he can never rule out the Tide. Um, you know, I, I do kind of want to talk a little bit about, since I brought up Jalen Hale, just the, the big visitor weekend and how that can hurt and or um, help a program. You think about it helping in the sense that, you know, they get to see a great game. This figures to be a great game, I, I should say. Um, you know, great atmosphere at Brian Denny Stadium. A lot of commits around to be in their ears, you know, uh, get to spend a lot of time with the fans and kind of see that atmosphere. That's a way it can help. You talk about the way it can hurt potentially just in terms of having so many recruits on campus, not being able to potentially divvy up as much time with each of them as you'd want to. So I, I bought up Jalen Hill because, you know, he visited for the Utah State game, the season opener, not not a, a big game, so to speak. Um, you know, definitely not like the Texas Alabama game he visited the next weekend, but he, he ended up committing to the Crimson Tide anyway. So, you know, I, I think it's just more so about how the program is run and, you know, if they're going to be able to, get enough time with each recruit, which Alabama is, is so accustomed to doing. I don't think it, it definitely won't be a problem, but I think that's just an interesting factor to bring up just in terms of how many recruits will be on campus and, um, you know, just how big of an atmosphere it will be. You know, th there's definitely a couple ways to view it. I, just in the case of Alabama, you view it as it helping them. 
uh, because of how well, well run Nick Saban and company have the things going in Tuscaloosa and have been for so long. Yeah, and you wonder why these recruiting support staff Mm -hmm. Uh, sizes are what they are. It's exactly. weekends like this, because as you said, you're trying to give that personalized treatment to these prospects. And it's difficult to do when you have a crush in numbers like you anticipate having for Alabama, Texas on Saturday. So in addition to Bussy making that official visit, anticipated to make the official visit this weekend, who are a couple other guys that are on the visit list as of right now, maybe uncommitted, maybe committed elsewhere that you're going to have your your eyes on and your ears open for? You know, definitely you have to start with the class of 2024. You know, that's obviously the, the class that will be signing in December and, and some prospects in February. So there's obviously a heightened level of importance there. And, and when you talk about the class of 2024, Daniel Hill is the first prospect that comes to mind uh, in terms of the unofficial visit list. You know, he was supposed to commit on August 23rd ended up pushing that commitment date backwards. We don't know when exactly he's going to uh, announce his college decision, but most people view that as being helpful for Alabama, him pushing that decision date back because South Carolina was viewed as a program trending in his recruitment. We know that his family likes Tuscaloosa. We know that Daniel likes Alabama too. He's been on campus more times than he can count. I asked him a, a few weeks ago, you know, how, exactly how many times have you been on Alabama's campus? He said, I, I lost track a while back, you know, well over um, a dozen times. You know, he's going to be returning again this weekend, expected to return this weekend for the Texas game. And, you know, he's a big-time running back target. Alabama doesn't have any running backs committed in the 2024 class right now, so you have to look at him. You have to look at somebody like a Demarcus Riddick. I know we, we've talked about him, um, you know, on the BOL roundtable and have, have had plenty of discussions about his recruitment. He committed to Auburn uh, a, a few weeks ago, flipped from – uh, Georgia to Auburn, the Crimson Tide are still in communication with him. They'll be getting him on campus. Still remains to be seen what exactly will happen there uh, Will happen there in his recruitment. He seemed to be pretty impressed by what he saw from Auburn that first weekend uh, of the season. But once again, you just never know. This is a fluid process. You mentioned that earlier. You know, that that's how recruiting is. And it isn't December yet. It's only September. So, um, you know, that that's, that's obviously someone we're paying attention to. You talk about George McIntyre. Class of 2025 quarterback out of Brentwood Academy in Tennessee. You know, he visited for the Champions Cookout in late July. Really got to bond with some of Alabama's uh, commitments. You talk about Ryan Williams, Jamie French, spent a lot of time with them and the coaching staff, really high on the Crimson Tide. And then also David Sanders, kind of similar. You know, he, he visited also in late July, spent a lot of time with the commitments, he ha has visited multiple times this year already. We'll be getting on campus five star offensive linemen out of Charlotte, North Carolina. So it's a huge visitors list. Honestly, Travis, we could probably spend the next 30, 45 minutes just running down all the recruits who are going to be here uh, and talking about their individual recruitments and where Alabama stands with them. It's just, it's a massive list, but those are, those are a few of the big names, um, you know, that we're paying attention to for yep. sure. You mentioned McIntyre is a 2025 quarterback. Interesting that I guess a 2025 quarterback in state 2025 quarterback who is actually committed to Texas yes is expected to be on campus with uh his pretty prominent teammate I guess KJ Lacey you're talking about um you know one of the top quarterbacks in the country somebody that I got to see at Future 50 and, and IMG Academy back in June uh really really interesting recruit in terms of just how early he committed to Texas. I know he visited a couple of times, got had his family get to see Austin. But, you know, an early decision like that wasn't necessarily expected. It, you know, it kind of came up a little bit out of the blue, um, you know, but he committed to there in early June, um, you know, has said great things about the Longhorns since then. But, you know, is also, um, you know, still communicating with Alabama. The Crimson Tide actually on the first day that they could initiate contact with class of 2025 recruits, they sent him a bunch of mail, a bunch of handwritten letters that was really appreciated uh, by KJ. He's still communicating with offensive coordinator Tommy Reese the most, you know, and he's going to be joined by Ryan Williams, as you mentioned, five-star plus wide receiver, number one uh, receiver in the class of 2025. Those two make for a dynamic duo at Sarah Lynn High School, um, you know, th th down there in Sarah Lynn, Alabama. And Ryan is looking to get KJ with him to be his teammate at the next level as well. He's made that very clear. Uh, you know, actually at Future 50, he did the uh, the horns down uh, hand signal, you know, right, right there next to KJ. He wants him to make that move to Tuscaloosa as well. And, you know, it, it, you know, KJ's 
He, he told me he won't be wearing any Texas gear this weekend, so I'll let, I'll let everyone know that. He, he said that he didn't know if he'd be allowed on the sideline for that, but, uh, you know, he's definitely keeping the door open to Alabama and, and hearing what they have to offer. Yeah, orange is a tough color to get away with in Tuscaloosa, not just because of uh, Texas. You, you so. saw the picture of the Alabama fan at the Texas game um, versus I didn't see that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, same, same thing there, too, you know, with the red sticking out. But, yeah, it's – uh. Yeah, it's going to be a really big weekend, and I, I know KJ Lacey and, and Ryan, they're going to have a good time. They, You know, KJ's trying to get Ryan on Texas's campus, too. Ryan got the first visit. You know, we'll, kind of, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. But, uh, yeah, definitely Alabama has uh, some really good options at quarterback in the 2025 class. Do you get the sense right now? I know we're still a little ways away, but with quarterbacks, it seems like it's never too early. Do you get the sense that there's a defined pecking order as far as Alabama's perspective of that group, KJ Lacey, McIntyre, or do you get the sense that at least right now uh, they probably feel good about either or, and certainly another really prominent quarterback prospect they're in, in addition to those two guys, right? Yes, there's Bryce Underwood out of Michigan, number one quarterback, number one overall player on, on, on three in the class of 2025. You know, he visited Alabama this past summer, recently received an offer from them uh, back in the spring, I believe. So, you know, you have to look at those three right there as, you know, potential options for Alabama in the class of 2025. And it really just based on how things are playing now. And once again, don't hold me to anything. I have not made any on three recruiting prediction machine picks yet, but it really seems like Alabama is poised to land yet another big time quarterback in the class of 2025 based on how things are going with recruiting efforts at the position in that class. And, you know, it, it just once again goes to show just how well uh, Bama is recruiting at that position. You talk about Julian Sain, the number one quarterback um, in the class of 2024, adding two top 10, top top 15 quarterbacks and Eli Holstein and Dylan Lonergan in the 2023 class. Ty Simpson, the cycle before, it just goes on and on with the recruiting efforts at the position. And um, just it's really impressive that no matter who the offensive coordinator is, you know, no matter who the weapons are, you know, Alabama's continuing to recruit that position well. And, I, I, you know, just once again, based on how things are going so far in the 2025 class, it really looks like they're poised to land another uh, elite QB in that group. Yeah, and having Ryan Williams and Jamie French in town as 2025 wide receivers as anticipated probably wouldn't hurt on the recruiting front either with those guys that are going to be there from the quarterback standpoint. This weekend. So when we talk about this 2024 class and knowing the number of commitments that Alabama currently sits with approaching 20 now, how tight do you think it is as far as numbers or is it just fluid? We say it so many times. Uh, it, it seems like in, in this era, especially with the way the numbers have been expanded with COVID and post COVID in some ways, uh, it's, it's hard to pin down, isn't it? Exactly where a, a team is at or a program's at as far as approaching the finish line, being full. Yes, for, for the people hoping that, you know, that I'll say a specific number and that's the number that Alabama's going to sign and that's the number they're aiming for, that it just is impossible with the way recruiting is nowadays. And like you mentioned with the transfer portal and all these other factors at play, you don't want to set yourself to a certain X number of commitments per class. There's obviously probably a range that Alabama would like to like to hit, um, you know, expected to add a few more commitments, a few positions of mine. We talked about the running back position. You know, you talk about offensive linemen with uh, Jordan Seaton recently naming his leader, Faber Edwin, somebody being that they're monitoring, you know, maybe another tackle or two. So you, you look at some of the positions of need and say, OK, maybe maybe they'll add four or five more. You know, you, you could kind of surmise that. But it isn't necessarily something where it's set in stone that Alabama is going to hit, I, I don't know, 24 commitments, 25 commitments in this class, especially coming off a big 2023 class that they were able to put together. You know, they're really being fluid with it, evaluating all their options, continuing to monitor some of those prospects on, on their radar and, and seeing how things go. And you just never know how one, you know, the domino effect, how one commitment can impact another recruitment and and so on and so forth. So, yeah, that, that would be my answer there. Still a fluid situation. Uh, still, still a situation where Alabama is continuing to monitor the recruits that, you know, they recently offered and, um, you know, seeing how their seasons go. Just that, that's the kind of situation they're in right now. But, you know, there, there are the, definitely the, the big time recruits that if they wanted in into this class, Alabama would accept their commitments no matter what. Yeah. And all the while you're trying to maintain your commitment list. 
Yes. You know, with schools still recruiting your guys. Although it seems like right now, anyway, you tell me Alabama's in a pretty good spot as far as being solid with the guys they have in the boat. Definitely. And, you know, the one beforehand, you know, if you were to ask me this question a couple of months ago, you know, you talk about Perry Thompson. That was the name that we just kept on bringing up because he was visiting Auburn and had expressed interest in visiting other schools. He was the commitment where you're like, okay, you know, if someone was to potentially depart from this class, it could be him. You look at this group right now, and once again, there, there, there are no definitives. There are no guarantees in recruiting, but this class seems very solid. They seem very locked in with Alabama. You know, I recently talked with a couple of them, and Jalen and Bakwe and Sterling Dixon. Jalen said, nope, dumb, dumb with visits. Sterling said, I'm really just focused on Alabama right now. We know Julian saying uh, the quarterback commit is, lo- is locked in too, and you just kind of go down that list, and, you know, they've all kind of bought into – uh, Alabama don't really plan on visiting any other schools. Uh, you know, could things change? Of course. You know, the, it, as we keep on mentioning, and we we I hate to keep on repeating it, but it's recruiting. You know, you n- you never know how these how these schedules can change. Alabama is getting multiple prospects committed elsewhere on campus this weekend themselves. You know, that could happen down the line. You know, I, I know a lot of people. If you cast your mind back to last November when Justice Haynes visited Georgia and Caleb Downs. Uh, he visited Georgia too and Ohio State. Um, you know, you know that that was a situation where Alabama fans may have been a little bit concerned. And uh, with Caleb Downs, you know, you looked at how big of a prospect he was and how much he's contributed. Now, you know, you you, you talk about the concerns that were there, but Alabama was still able to keep them in the fold and keep them committed and actually flip, flip the prospect later on in Caden Proctor. So, yes, uh, for right now, this seems like a very solid group of commitments for the Crimson Tide. As for noted football enthusiast Nate Oates, Nate gets it, doesn't he? If you're going to bring in some official visitors from the basketball perspective, this is the weekend to do it because electric is going to be the word used to describe Tuscaloosa, Alabama over the next three or four days. So give us a little bit of an idea of who Nate is welcoming in this weekend, not only from an official perspective, but unofficially as well. Yeah, so once again, it's a huge weekend for the basketball side of things. You talk about uh, the official visitors and Con Nupo and uh, Nupo and uh, Tyler Betsy as well, two of the top prospects in the class of 2024. Alabama is going to be getting them on campus for official visits. I don't know if they're going to end up in this class. I, I, I don't. I wouldn't project it right now. But once again, wait, wait until they get on campus. NATO, he hasn't reached the Nick Saban's levels of success in terms of the championships, but he's really proven himself. Him and his staff have proven themselves capable of getting recruits on campus, making strong impressions on them. Um, you know, you talked about Jace Richardson, who they recently played host to for an official visit. You know, the Crimson Tide really kind of, I don't know if they necessarily shot up their list, uh, shot up his list because he was already high on the program before, but he really came away impressed by what he saw from them. And I, I think you have to watch out for the same thing with, uh, with, with Khan and Tyler as well. Um, you know, they don't have any commitments in the 2024 class. How appealing is that going to be to each of these guys, you know, as they evaluate Alabama versus their other options? They're expected to take, a, you know, a multiple official visits after Alabama. Um, but, you know, w- once again, we'll kind of see where things go with their recruitments. It's a pivotal stretch, uh, not only for Alabama basketball, but for these recruitments as well. You know, uh, you're going to expect to see a lot of decisions in the coming weeks. So, you know, w- we'll see how things play out with them. But, you know, you look at the 2025 class as well, getting Caleb Wilson on campus, the top five recruit in the class of 2025, um, you know, out of Georgia. Yeah, so Alabama's just done a really good job of recruiting big time prospects in recent years under Nate Oates, and you can't rule them out with any of these recruits. I think with the 2025 class and also 2026, you know, with Caleb Wilson and Caleb Holt, respectively, you know, not expecting any decisions anytime soon, but you're trying to, you know, lay down the groundwork, lay down the foundation for them in, in their recruitments and, and, and really make strong impressions on them. Someone like a Caleb Holt, you know, he, he's, he he um, goes to school there in Alabama, and, in New Market, Alabama. So not, not necessarily too much of a big drive for him. You, you should expect to see him on campus multiple times throughout the season and, and in years to come. But uh, once again, you're just trying to lay down that groundwork trying to plant those seeds, you know, talk about um, someone they recently played host to and Tylus Jordan, also out of Georgia. He visited last year, visited this year again, too. And a big thing about um, this past weekend's visit for him was that he was able to meet 
some of the new assistants on the staff, Preston Murphy, um, you know, Austin Clonch, some of those other guys that, you know, they were able to interact with that they weren't able to before. So that that's a big thing with these visits too, you know, just being able to get that face-to-face -face time with some of the new assistants, um, lay down that groundwork and hopefully build toward a great class, which Alabama has been doing over these past few years under Coach Oates. Yeah, before we let you go, the viewers, listeners, you name it, wondering where is JoJo on the road going next? Where are we going with you? Where are you taking us in your travels? Where, where am I going next? You know, I think I'm going to be going to Tampa this upcoming weekend uh, to see Joseph Iannata versus Solomon Williams. Joseph Iannata, obviously a, a commitment in Alabama's class. Solomon Williams, somebody that he's trying to get in this class too. He's an edge target out of Carrollwood Day School. So I'm thinking about going to the Tampa area for this weekend. Next week, looking at potentially going to the Saraland versus Spanish Fork game, seeing Sterling Dixon versus Ryan Williams, maybe catching the game the day before. Uh, I need to get out there to Alabama. The, the high school recruiting scene in the state of Alabama is just sensational. It's up there with, you know, some of the best of the best. When you talk about the the weekly matchups, you know, you talk about Sarah Lynn versus Spanish Foreign, um, you know, you're, you're going to get Thompson versus Clay Chalkville later in the month, too. It's just it, it's an awesome time to, fo uh, to follow Alabama high school recruiting. And, uh, it, you know, it's once again, just in terms of the amount of talent that's going there, you look at the 2025, 2026 classes, even 2027, it's just continuously building up um, with, with the level of talent there. So I'm hoping to be out there sometime in, in the near future. Yeah, and we'll be doing it vicariously through you, Joseph, right there with us at BamaOnline.com. Joseph Hastings, always great stuff with us here on the Bama Online Podcast. Safe travels, my man, and thanks again, and be sure to catch up with Joseph and the rest of us right there at BamaOnline.com. For Joseph, Travis Ryer, thanking you for joining us right here on the Bama Online Podcast. Until next time, so long, everybody.